It's very cool. Welcome to Friday. Today in the mailbag, we have this breakout from SparkFun uh, for the micro bit. And it sort of kicked off this whole line of thinking for me because I've been doing some PCB design lately. And uh, there's some observable trends around here. But yeah, um, to start off, of course, you can get this micro bit breakout from SparkFun. And it basically enables you to, as the name implies, connect any number of micro bit or micro bit compatible devices to a breadboard or a PCB via this 2.54 pitch uh, millimeter pitch header, which is pretty standardized. Uh, very nice. So let's take a look at all I've got uh, pulled up here. So first up, the breakout itself that we're looking at right now ships for $5.50, which is pretty affordable. So if your micro bit is about $15, it's about 20 total, uh, which is you know pretty good for a starter board that you can hook up to various things. The micro bit is designed with a ton of technology built right in, things like temperature sensors, accelerometers, radio communication, and things like that. So you know if you're trying to connect your own special hardware to this thing, though. It can be a little bit difficult. Um, there are spots for alligator clips. Let me show you. <laughs> alligator clips on here, for example. However, uh, that's not the most stable way to connect things. And if you want a little bit more of a permanent connection, something a little bit more stable like a breadboard or uh, your own PCB, then you might need something like this in order to make it actually be stable. And then that slots in there very nice and securely. Arr, very securely. There we go. Ooh, what a nice snap. Glorious. There's also other ways of connecting to these, such as um, breakouts that have like screw terminals and things like that. This is the servo kit from P. Maroney, and it's got one of the new micro bits on it that actually has improved connectors for alligator clips. But um, it also kind of fits into this, a, f a couple of larger trends that we're seeing lately, where you have things like the new Raspberry Pi Pico uh, with the RP. P2040 chip that's custom silicon by Raspberry Pi. Very cool. Look at this. Um, and then there's a couple of other ones that hold to a couple of the same trends. This one, uh, as we reported uh, last week, is very much designed as a component. So it's a microcontroller in and of itself, and you can use it on its own. But their real dream for it is that you will be able to embed this into your own technology. And there's a couple of aspects of it that reflect that. For example, these castellated edges, which mean that you can lay it flat on a PCB and just use solder pads to connect it, to solder it on. And then also uh, enabling that is this flat bottom. There's no components mounted on there. There's spots to expand it if you want to, but if you want to have it just stick onto your PCB, then that's very easy with this flat bottom. And Raspberry Pi is just the latest in a number of companies to recently do this. You've got the Adafruit uh, Cutie Pie, <laughs> which... Um, is very adorable. And similarly, the Seeduino Xiao, which are almost identical. We've done a, a video on the differences between the two of those before, but both of those have your same castellated edges and flat bottom for easy embedding onto your own PCBs. And they have standardized pin header with, again, that pitch of 2.54 millimeters. And the same thing with these Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense and similar boards that came out uh, in the last couple of years. You've got those castellated edges and no components on the bottom. Uh, the cool thing about this set of boards, all of these, is that they're very breadboard friendly as well as easy to put on your PCB. So you can easily solder headers through all of these. They have both uh, through hole headers and the castellated edges. So uh, it's very easy to do it either way if you're just trying to prototype a circuit, you know, uh, and you can use the same board to prototype on a breadboard and then later, uh, design a PCB that takes the same exact microcontroller with all of the same functions and just goes directly onto your own PCB. So that's a really nice functionality that makes these things really easy to design with. Even if you're just getting started with microcontrollers and you want to work with it on a breadboard, or you want to be able to scale up and put it on your own PCB, these are very good for that. The next sort of step up um, 
in this gradient that I've arranged here <laughs> is things like this Raspberry Pi tea cobbler from uh, Adafruit. Raspberry Pis are designed uh, not necessarily to be embeddable, although there are Raspberry Pi compute modules that are sort of designed for that, but they do use a standardized pin header. They have these 40 pin connectors, but if you didn't have a footprint available for your PCB, you could easily just drop in two one by 20 uh, connectors. And KiCad, in KiCad, it's really easy to do that. Uh, also, this is still very compatible with breadboards and things. So with other boards like, uh, or other controllers, like the ESP8266, this is the ESP01 module, which has this eight pin header. And then the at tiny chip, the at tiny 85 is on this board. Um, and it has a standard eight pin dip socket, which also has that 2.54 millimeter uh, pin spacing that makes it really easy to design both it's breadboard compatible and it's a very standardized header spacing so that you can easily design your own PCBs. Even if you don't have the specialized footprint, you can just make a two by eight footprint and drop it in there. Um, so these, you know, they uh, aren't immediately ready for dropping onto a PCB, but you know, you, you can easily design your own connectors for them and ways to put those on. Next up, we have ones like the microbit. So these are, you know, they're very powerful and they're very compact. You can fit a ton of pins into one space uh, and you have that alligator clip option, but you do not have the ability to directly put this onto a breadboard. You need a little bit of help. Uh, and also it's not a standardized pin spacing. This is very non-standard. It has multiple pin spacings. <laughs> and for that, you have things like today's mailbag, the SparkFun uh, microbit breakout, which takes those irregular pins that are very dense and breaks out some of them into this edge connector. It's not all of them because otherwise, you know, you wouldn't get this same thing. But you, as you can see, <laughs> tons of connections. It might be all of them, actually. How many pins are on here? 20? Hmm. I'll have to check. But yeah, uh, it takes a non-standard connector um, on the microcontroller itself and turns it into something that's a bit more friendly for PCBs and uh, for breadboarding. And the nice thing about this is that there are multiple versions of this board. So this is, you know, the standard micro bit and you've got the V2 as well. Then there's the Adafruit Clue, which is designed to have the same connector at the bottom, but also has its own little TFT screen. You've got extra sensors for gesture and light. Uh, you've got the same little buttons. So a lot of the same um, enclosures and things will work with this. And the same, if you have a PCB that connects to the, to the micro bit, you can use this same board in it. But uh, different board, similar form factor, and compatible. And this has a little stemma connector on here as well, which it will get to later. Another thing, of course, you can do if you want a permanent connection, semi-permanent connection, is to solder directly onto here with dead bug soldering. And you can do that, of course, with you know uh, your at tiny's chips as well, your ESP8266 is and things. Um, you can just do quick and dirty soldering to attach stuff. I haven't done this quite right, so it doesn't really work, but. Uh, and likewise, you have other boards that sort of take the same form factor. This is the Tinker board uh, using the Sci-5 Hi-5 uh, chip on there. And it's designed to be compatible with everything the micro bit already is. And there's good reason for that because there's a ton of breakouts that people have been designing for these. Uh, so it's less easy to connect your own hardware directly to it, but there are a ton of modules and connections already available for these kits to connect it to servos, kits to connect it to displays and things like that. So, and uh, I wanna take a minute really quick and go through some of these, this information I've got pulled up. So uh, those ones that I was talking about that are really easy to connect to both breadboards and your own PCBs, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico, for example, if you look down on the uh, documentation page, you can find this hardware design with RP2040 PDF, which links to a zip file with a sort of uh, minimum viable breakout for the RP2040 chip that's on the Pico board. So, um, I haven't yet seen, I'm sure that there is somewhere, a uh, 
and also a minimum viable breakout for the Pico board itself. But for the chip, there is absolutely a design that you can import into KiCad and uh, design your own board with the RP2040 chip from Raspberry Pi. And they give you a, a complete basic design for that, which is really nice. Uh, there's also Seed Studio has released um, a KiCad PCB design tutorial so that you can get started embedding the Seedwino Xiao into your own projects. This may also work with the Adafruit Cutie Pie, like I mentioned earlier. They have the same pinout, I think, but double check that <laughs> before you try and make something. But uh, yeah, it should work with both. It definitely works with the Seedwino Xiao. And then uh, our good friend Gustavo Reynaga has created these KiCad footprints for the new Nano family, including that Nano 33 BLE Sense that I showed you a minute ago. The BLE Sense is actually just the BLE plus some sensors. If you look at the at the physical boards, the BLE itself has the same footprint and the same solder pads. So if you had your own little microphone and things, you could solder them directly onto it and get a BLE Sense. It's funny. Um, so yeah, you can go and find those footprints linked in the description below for the Arduino Nano family as well. So all of these are very much designed to be very embeddable into your own technology. Then, uh, oh yeah, and I found a cool one for Teensy on the SparkFun blog. I have been really interested in making my own breakout board uh, interface for the TNC with the TNC audio shield. And there's a great tutorial for doing that in KiCad on SparkFun that I'm going to check out later. So this is one of those middle of the road ones where the TNC also, like the Raspberry Pi, the um, your ESP8266, your at Tiny85, all of those have your standardized breadboard friendly, PCB friendly 2.54 millimeter header pitch. And the TNC, I think most of them have the same pitch as well. I've come across a few boards that look like this, but don't quite have the same pitch. TNC does generally. And so you can easily, uh, you could make your own little footprint and drop it in if you wanted, but also you can use the resources that are available and linked here. Then we get onto the micro bit, and I wanted to show you here all of these kits that are available for breaking out the micro bit. So here's the Gator Science Kit funded by the NSF, super cool, sort of for students. I mean, the, whole, the entire micro bit e ecosystem is sort of designed for students. Uh, this is just ones on SparkFun. There's a ton more on Pimeroni, Adafruit, etc. But you've got like the the breakout here. You've got the weather bit, micro bit carrier board. You've got the Motobit carrier board, plus that Kitronic one I showed you a while ago, the servo light. All these things already exist. So you, the idea is that you don't have to design your own PCBs and things to connect with this. They're really designed for beginners who are not going to be wanting to do that yet. It's sort of a getting started place. And then you use all these modules. It's very modular. It's designed to talk to modules. And then we get to the, oh yeah, SparkFun KiCad libraries. I've been doing a lot of PCB design in KiCad and I can recommend these KiCad libraries. This is sort of a side note. Then we get to the final tier. Uh, this is sort of similar to the micro bit stuff that we were just looking at, where uh, again, with the SparkFun micro mod system, you have these M.2 connectors that have their own spec. And you can, the idea is that you have a, a baseboard, such as this machine learning baseboard or a design breakout board that I have over here. Uh, not design, uh, an, a UI sort of breakout board for input and display. And you can swap out between them your microcontrollers. So you've got an Artemis module here from SparkFun. You've got a SAMD. Oh, this is Backburn. <laughs> this one is the SAMD51. And then this one is your SparkFun Artemis module. And you can sort of swap them back and forth so you can use a different brain in a different carrier board and prototype easily that way without making whole new PCBs to talk to each chip. And uh, you've got these quick 
connectors, which are similar and compatible with, in some cases with Adafruit's Stemma connectors. So these, again, it's really designed to be modular. It's got its own special little connector. So, uh, you know, you've got these N.2 connectors, you've got these special little quick connectors and things. But the idea is not necessarily that you'll be designing your own mm, hardware interfaces for these as much as using their modules. And then eventually you'll be able to just take this chip and your final design and you know uh, get those produced on their own. You also have these Seed Grove modules, which again, are not a standard uh, header pitch, I believe. These are a smaller pitch, but they are designed to all be able to really easily plug into different things. And in fact, the Adafruit Stemma system, the uh, SparkFun Quick system, are compatible. And in some cases, there's also smaller Seed Grove uh, connectors that you can get an adapter and connect those to these as well. They're all sort of, I believe they're all I squared C. Um, there are various forms of the Adafruit Stemma connectors, which they go into on their website. Let's pull that up. But in general, all these things are very, are like non-standard. They're not a, a similar um, simple header pitch. And you do maybe have to get special connectors for them. But the idea between all, all of these systems is that you'll be able to use the modules that they've released and they'll be releasing enough modules and keeping them updated and stuff that you won't really have to design your own hardware uh, right off the bat. So you can get a SparkFun MicroMod DIY carrier kit for designing your own carrier boards. You can get this pack of five connectors and some little uh, screws and things to hold the M.2 thingy in place, module in place. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is pretty affordable. You, it does have its own custom footprint. You do have to get your own custom, uh, get their own custom connectors for it. But yeah, then they have really good uh, guides on designing with MicroMod. In this case, it's released as Eagle files and an Eagle tutorial. So you may have to you know, vary which <laughs> which CAD software you're using based on whether you want to work with the Pico, which has its you know minimum viable board in KiCad. Um, the Seedwino is in KiCad. This one is in Eagle. Uh, you could create your own footprints, and I'm sure eventually they'll release footprints for both and or other uh, CAD software, but yeah. It's a little bit more complicated to work with. But all of these systems, Quick, Stemma, and Grove, each have dozens to hundreds of their own modules that you can use for pretty much anything. You've also got like this little adapter. So you could connect it to a breadboard. You could connect it to standard headers. It just takes a little bit more effort. But the idea is that you won't have to. You'll just be able to find what you need already available. So it's an interesting dichotomy that's sort of starting to arise where you have, um, oh yeah, here's the Stemma page, also linked in the description below where they talk about the different types of Stemma connectors. There's three pins and four pin ones. And the four pin ones, I believe, are the ones that are connect compatible in some cases with SparkFun Quick and with Seed Grove. So there is kind of this dichotomy arising where in the last couple of years, you get a lot of these with their breadboard and PCB compatible designs. And then you get uh, more and more of these, which are you know, less friendly to designing your own hardware to directly interface with it, but also designed to be super modular, designed for them to create lots of options for you to choose between. And then the advantage, of course, with these is that you don't have to solder anything. You don't have to strip any wires. You don't have to tin anything. You can just plug and play with the quick Stemma and Grove modules. You really, all you need is a little cable, which is standardized for each company <laughs> and uh, a little connector on the board. You can just buy modules and then, you know, I can connect this potentiometer to any Grove compatible device. I don't have to worry about what pins I'm connecting to. Well, you kind of do when you're programming it, but like <clears throat> I can program it in any way that it has a Grove connector and just be like, oh, it's plug and play. I don't have to search for which ground pin I'm going to use, which, you know, 
digital pin I'm going to use, I just put it into an available slot and I'm ready to go. And there's a lot of example code that's already ready to go for these as well. So yeah, it's sort of two ends of the spectrum. Uh, maybe not even a spectrum, just two modes of interacting with hardware that people are designing for now. More and more, like the quick and Stemma connectors have just been coming out in the last couple of years, uh, as have this trend toward castellated edges and flat bottoms. Um, I remember when the Arduino Maker 1000 came out, it had a flat bottom for that reason, but it also didn't have the castellated edges. Mm. Yeah, so two trends, very interesting ways to connect things together. And uh, because it's technically a mailbag, go check out the uh, SparkFun microbit breakout and your quick LED stick. These are two that I just ordered to be able to test things out. Let's see if there's any comments before we wrap up. David says, board edge connectors are kind of retro and I love it. Yeah, they are kind of retro. Um, these ones in particular, I think you were talking about. And if you're familiar with building your own PCBs and stuff, these types of slots and things and ways of interfacing hardware with each other will be very familiar. In fact, you know, this is the M.2 connectors for the Micromod kits are very similar to that. And to the point that they had to say, okay, it's a standard connector, but the protocol that it uses, the way that it actually talks between the hardware is not your standard M.2 that you might've seen for a PC or for a PC design and things like that. So, uh, in fact, there's a little bit of a snafu happening where there's a few, a couple of competing standards for the same form factor already. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Everyone's interested in making it work. Same with the Stemma and Quick and Grove. People are uh, working on building connectors that are, or making the protocols all talk to each other. And yeah, uh, it's very interesting. We'll keep our eye on that. Thanks for joining me on this Friday. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you soon. Hack on.